this, like, uh, whatever. Like, I literally, like, I can get, like, I've been raped type shit. And, like, okay, who cares? Like, move on. Uh, next day, whatever. Like, why are you talking about this? Because it's business. Like, carry on, scurry away. Um, but this, this things, these things that I was reading, I was disturbed. I am still disturbed to this day. I still can't believe it. Um, they're very hard to swallow. It's like a movie. It's all like a movie, but it's like a movie. Um, I read about, you know, it's, it's instead of a gangbang, it was actually these people, um, this club, and they were recruiting members, guys, uh, this way. This is how they're getting, you know, people to get a hold of them. And they were having them take these girls um, all ages, not escorts, not that it would matter, we were all the same, but I'm saying, like, these, some of these girls were, you know, young, and they were thinking they were talking to another girl online, and they thought they were gonna go meet this girl, and, you know, they would, they would take these girls very violently, and, um, they would beat them and rape them, and talk explicitly about it, and then they would tie them up, and they would hold them until this club, came in the middle of the night to pick up, you know, it's toys. <laughs> Welcome in everyone. I'd like to say hello to those in the chat. <clears throat> Welcome in to Rebecca Ann. Rebecca Ann. Rebecca Ann. Welcome in to Tracy Fleetwood. All right, welcome in to Sweet Dude Shibs. Welcome in to Rochelle D. Rochelle D says, go shit has to stop. Oh, was that some good, uh, was that some good roller skating uh, music, Sweet Dude? Welcome in to Bonnie. Bonnie, welcome in. Amy, welcome and thanks for the flowers. Amy Sita. Bobby Smith. Welcome in, Bobby Smith. Ellen West. Ellen West. Welcome in, Ellen West. Welcome in, Ellen West. All right. K West. <laughs> the West. K West, welcome in. Uh, K West, will you will you, uh, will you stop allowing me to send you places to cause trouble, please? K West, uh, uh, apparently I'm sending you places because you're my little bitch, and uh, you're my lap dog, and you do what I tell you because you're not your own person. So apparently I am sending you places. Uh, word on the street. <clears throat> uh, Amy says hello to everyone. All right, Bonnie says hello. Ellen West says, what up, Prof and chat? Hope everyone's well. Nah, fuck it. I'm not well. All right, you guys. What up, y'all? We got like three dudes in the house. Everyone else fucking hiding out, lurking. We got 60, uh, 60 lurking, and three dudes in the chat. Nice. All the haters. I got a lot of them. Curtis Hinkle, what up, Curtis? Hello, everyone, and hello to you, Curtis. Welcome back in, uh, Pam Sheehan. Welcome in. Hello to you. Hello. All right. Monday Late Night Show. Yes, it is. Welcome in, uh, Four Pits. Four Pits. Yes. Welcome in Fort Pitts. It is a uh, late night. We're going to talk about bad news today. We're going to be talking about bad news. So get your uh, get your bad news hats on. Salty Miller. Welcome in, Salty Miller. All right. Welcome in to Noe. 
Amos, Noe Amos, welcome in. I bet he'd like to tag you. He seems like the type. Yeah. Jalen, yeah, we'll be talking about that. I just stopped it uh, momentarily. We'll be right back to it. What a beautiful Christy. What up? All right, Jalen did a good deed. Yeah, I mean, did you hear what she just said? I mean, most people just gloss right over what she just said, which is uh, pretty mind-blowing. Nancy Drew was in totality. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Eclipse. All right. C-Star. What up, C-Star? This morning for me, just started the coffee. Oh. What up, Digital? Come on in, Digital. And uh, Bobby Smith, I'm a, I'm not all right. Fuck it. I'm, I'll tell you the truth. It's, it's see, we're dealing with. You'll find out. You'll find out. Now we can get started. Digitals here. Yeah. Oh, Kanye's here too. It's the West. You like a letter people send out? Yeah, apparently, because, you know, whatever fantasy world shit they make up in their minds, uh, in their projecting, uh, yeah, it's real. It's real. It's it's real. Their, their fantasy world is real, you know, and we'll be talking about that. No way got to be, no way another West that got to be a troll. Probably is. I mean, you know what they do. They come in here to fuck with me because I tell too much truth. They don't like it. All right. Welcome in, Allie. Welcome in, Noe. I said hello. Bobby Smith. No one said you're a hater, Bobby. I don't think you're a hater. All right. Uh, yeah, Amy's a sweetheart for this chat. If they're lurking and touching themselves, which they probably are, most of them, uh, did someone say bad news? <clears throat> what up, peace? Not a hater, prof. Or my TV, and I was getting ready for bed. Oh, interesting. I'm on your TV. That's what, that's the way I usually watch YouTube. When I'm in the bed, I pop it on that TV, and I enjoy it. I actually don't. <clears throat> spoiler alert! I don't watch any Delphi whatsoever when I'm in my bed. I just get in the bed and I watch YouTube for interesting things. Because for me, Delphi is not interesting at all. It's fucking heartbreaking, it's traumatizing, and it's the crazy how. And we'll be talking about that in a moment. Yeah, so I don't get in the bed and watch Delphi. There she is. Uh, there she is. She's coming in proper tonight. Welcome back, Carol. <laughs> Carol, you coming in like your normal self. I love it. <laughs> Swinging that saloon door open. Come on in, baby. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about, but I'll, I'll be slow to get started, I promise you. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to work on a few things, which is a difficult thing. Allie watches animal videos. Oh, I watch all kinds of shit, like everything that interests me, but not fucking true crime. Okay. Not in bed yet. Very much appreciate the honesty, and there are haters. I'm not one. I know you're not one. All right. No, the real haters, I know who they are. It's, that's the thing. Like, these people, it's very interesting, man. Well, I'll be, trust me, I'm going to get into my Joe Lewis uh, rant. You like the Tartaria? I do, too, except it's so much bullshit. Uh, so much bullshit. I mean, Tartaria was a region of Russia. It just happened to be where Gog and Magog... Uh, those locales are, Gog and Magog are locales in Tartaria. 
which is a region of Siberia. People, people are fucking nuts. But I like the uh, I like the buildings. I like the concept of a worldwide civilization uh, that's that's uh, has a similar building style. Yeah, Jerry Springer should turn to Delphi. Well, that's what Delphi is. Don't you know that? Oh, trust me, I got a lot to say tonight. Yeah. So speaking of that, let's get back to her, okay? Because I don't know if you just caught what she just said. Yeah, Jared Boosters is awesome. He is. He is. There's a few. There's a few of them. Yeah, what I'm more, more what I'm more interested in is all the ancient or not ancient, the old photography from a hundred years ago and prior. You know, the oldest photography of all the buildings that he shows and stuff. Good shit. Good shit. All right, so let's get back to uh what's important and take them wherever to the clubhouse and um. okay let me back it up because i think it's very important that you listen because everyone has a tendency to gloss over what she just said and you got to hear what she just said okay like specifically right around like listen to what she's saying you know people to get a hold of them and they were having them take. Okay, hold on. I read about, you know, it's it's instead of a gangbang, it was actually these people, um, this club, and they were recruiting members, guys, uh, this way. This is how they're getting, you know, people to get a hold of them, and they were having them take these girls, um, all ages, not escorts. Not that it would matter, we were all the same, but I'm saying like these, some of these girls were, you know, young and they were thinking they were talking to another girl online and they thought they were going to go meet this girl. And You know, they would, they would take these girls very violently. Listen to what she's saying. And, um they would beat them and rape them and talk explicitly about it and then they would tie them up and they would hold them and okay one more time for those in the back listen to what she's saying these people um this club and they were recruiting members guys uh this way this is how they're getting you know people to get a hold of them and they were having them take these girls um all ages not escorts not that it would matter we were all the same but i'm saying like these some of these girls were you know young and they were thinking they were talking to another girl online and they thought they were going to go meet this girl and you know they would they would take these girls very violently and um they would beat them and rape them and talk explicitly about it and then they would tie them up and they would hold them until this club came in the middle of the night to pick up you know it's toys and take them wherever to the clubhouse and um, sell them or, or do other terrible things. Hold on. Listen to what she's saying. Because I have a feeling like it's still slipping by people's fucking consciousness here. Um, they would beat them and rape them and talk explicitly about it. And then they would tie them up. And they would hold them until this club came in the middle of the night to pick up, you know, its toys. This club, meaning this group of people, this group of dudes, comes in the middle of the night to pick up the girls that they've beaten and raped and tied up. Listen. And take them wherever the clubhouse and um sell them or, or do other terrible things to them and um so i i said look i was like i told my friend i was like you are gonna tell this man that you found a girl okay so she just told you what they do now she's gonna tell you what she attempted and you're gonna tie me up and he can come over and when he gets here we're gonna tie him up 
and I'm gonna see what see what he has to say, I guess. And he agreed. And um, so we begin the the play. Um, he's giving me the number of this guy, and I'm texting him in the bathroom, and he's in there doing his thing on there, telling him things. And um, he was like, Jalen. I was like, what? He said, they know you. I was like, everybody knows me. It's okay. Whatever. He's like, no. Like, he comes out, and his face is white. It's like, he's a ghost. He looks sick. And he's like, no, they really know you. And so I look at the messages that he was talking about, and I was like, wow. Like, that's all I can still say to this day is wow. Like, it was obvious they knew me. Um, some of the things didn't make sense to me though, because it didn't, I'd never been in, you know, some of these things they were saying, I was like, that's never happened and that's never happened. I don't get it. Um, he, this guy on the other end of this phone of these text messages, he said, I belonged to them already and that I ran away a couple years ago and that he'd been trying to find me and that I was theirs, like, and, uh, he, uh, he was very adamant and very happy that this guy found me. And he even said like he would trade all his girls for me. Like he was like, you can have all of them, but this one's mine. And he was, you know, going through, oh yeah, this is how we're gonna, I'm gonna do it. And like, I can't wait to, you know, see the look on her face when she sees who it is and uh, other things that was said. Um, I will actually pause this with it. Okay, now what I had done is I had made like a PDF um, and it basically highlights the things out of these text messages because what happened was, was my friend, he ends up um, backing out of this thing. And like, I'm like, you have got to let me see who this is. So I'm not looking over my shoulder, you know? And he uh, ended up coming out of his room and throwing his tablet on his bed, shutting his door and left his own house <laughs> like he was like he said something along the lines of the guy canceled and he left and i'm like what the fuck just happened and that guy didn't cancel he was very 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 happy about finding me like he didn't just cancel so i kicked the door in and i grabbed that tablet and it was on like a text now app and i'm like wanting to go back to the beginning to see like did he tell me the truth like is, i want to read all of this and so i record like after i get to the beginning i'm like scrolling i'm scrolling and I've got it all recorded so that I can always have what it was. And um, this is, so yeah, I, I basically took the, the prominent parts of these conversations. It's all disgusting, but um, I did like a, yeah, see? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's like, there it is. I will read you know, the first part I'm going to be reading is going to be about the other girls. There's plenty of pictures in here of missing girls, of girls that they've taken. Um, and it's very descriptive, so you guys, you guys don't want to like be sick to your stomachs type shit, like if you can't handle a lot of, a lot of stuff, um, I wouldn't continue watching, honestly, so, um, okay. This is about, this is between my client and whoever, this anonymous person about the other girls. You're good with this, right? It's going to be brutal at times. They need to be taught. Okay, because you'll have to keep them tied up and when you're gone until they'll learn. I'll help teach them. Until then, they're the club's toys. Tie her up good, maybe around her neck too, something sturdy, as well as her hands and feet. Whip the fuck out of her. Make sure to send some pics, and I'll be by later. Yeah, still 8 to 10, maybe a little later. She has a long drive. LOL. Okay, she'll fight. Don't be nice. Beat the hell out of her if you have to. We'll get some little ones too then. Try not to knock out any teeth though. She might hold a grudge, LOL. 
this club is going to be great. We already have so many girls. The girls will rotate to different houses, but either members will host or will hold them once in a while where they are being held at. That part is up to you, though. There will always be another place we can take them. We're working on setting up a storefront, a steady spot with a liquor license. <sighs> Fucking choke her ass out. Drag her out if she won't go nicely. I'm trying to talk her into driving there now. If you can get a hold of her, tie her ass up and rape her. If you know where she is. If not, then sit out there for a few and see if I can get her to come to you. Keep her there for now if you can get to her. You're her trainer. She's going to be sketchy, so no one knows where she is or where she went. Try to be nice at first. If not, then fuck her up. I don't know. She's being fucking stubborn. Hey, I've got some new pics of a member's wife. If you want to see her. I can't wait to hear this chick scream. I think she might be for sale, too. And there's pictures. Okay, um... She's never had anal, so we want to DP her in a gangbang. I'll write him and ask. He wants to see her in pain bad. I guess she's a real bitch and he doesn't care at this point. <laughs> Most of them, okay, then he asked, uh, is she from the Lafayette area? My friend had asked that and he said, no, most of them aren't. She's, um, she's out near Greentown, near Kokomo. Because this isn't off yet, you guys. Like, this stuff isn't off yet right now. <sighs> okay. He wants to see her double-fisted, beaten and bleeding. He wants to hear her beg for her life. So I'm guessing he really hates her, lol. Yeah, he wants me to break her pussy bone and shove a two-liter up her ass. I told him some of that could kill her. So he decided on just a brutal gangbang. Oh, yeah. She's not going anywhere. We haven't started tricking her out. He wants her to obey, but he thinks she's too stubborn and will probably fuck her up and sell her. We do have a very powerful member in our group. I didn't even realize it until last night. He's going to have very good connections to help with certain things. I hope anyway. Okay, I'll see if I can get her. I'd fuck the hell out of her. Be fun to torture her. Okay, that's some things about the other girls. Um, I'm going to read. The next stuff is like about me. It's when they were talking about me. Um, and now, remind you, yeah, this is also how I knew that, yes, they knew me. Because a lot of it is head on. Um, it, it's obvious. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but a lot of it, like, and I'll point out the things that I was confused about. Like, I didn't understand because I'm like, that has never happened. And like, what the fuck? So it was, it was confusing to, like, have somebody that knows you and then, like, it's throwing shit in there. All right. So. Okay, he's like, I told her that, that t I call you boss man. He said, I know that was perfect. Awesome. Give her the address. Pick her up if needed. Try to have her tied by the time I get there. I told her to listen to you. She should do so willingly. I told her to be there no later than 2.30. She is one tough bitch, so be careful. She's very dumb, though. She should let you restrain her. She sent me pics. It's her. Then tell her you're not getting her, and it's up to her to be there. She'll be there, trust me. I'll be taking her with me after we have some fun with her. You can have all the other women I can send, but this bitch has always been mine. He said, damn it, now I found her and you're just going to take her like that. He said, she's all about the money. You can pay her if you want and get it back later when I get there. She's a meth head thief. She was in charge of some things and left with a night's pay. Now it's time for her to pay it back. See, that's the part, that's the first part I was confused about. Um, 
I've never, I was like, I've never been in charge of anything for anybody. And I've never just left with anything. Like, I'm so lost. <sighs> okay. You'll be able to fuck her all you want. She's been hard head to train. Let's put it that way. Giving her a deposit is up to you. If you don't want to, then tell her I'll double the grand, but she'll have to talk to me about it. She'll show up. I know her very, very well. She's crazy as fuck. Ask her nicely to be tied and wait for me. It's club policy. You can fuck her if you want when she's tied. I don't give a flying fuck what you do to her. I'll still do worse. And I'm just going to say, like, that, the last sentence of that has been the one thing that has stuck with me. Like, that shit, it resonates in my fucking head when I think about this shit. Like, you'll still do worse. Like, that's some fucked up shit. Um, okay, so have her stripped and ready. It's club policy. I'll talk with her about anything else she wants to know. Make sure she's tied good. She's going to want to... She's going to want to fight and run when she sees me, lol. Tell her money is no issue. It's the privacy that's important to the club. I'll come in with a hat and bandana on. You're going to love the look on her face when I take off the bandana. Okay, she's desperate. Always has been. She sees money and that's all she's interested in. We have a long history. She's been hiding. I told her she would come to me someday. She didn't believe me. Haven't seen her in over two years. She belongs to me and she knows it. That's another. I was like, I've never belonged to anybody. Like, what the fuck is going on? Um, I never ran away. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so lost. Um, I can walk in with all that stuff, but I want to be face to face with her when I take it off. This bitch is the most hard-headed slut I've ever had. LOL, you're fine. It's not a big deal. She was just given too much slack and trust and it won't happen again. You'll be able to fuck her all you want. You'll never have to pay. She's mine. Nothing to worry about, man. You'll have a great time. I've got more dirt on her than a city landfill. Huh. Okay, it's fine. It'll be better to have her there. Don't worry about a room. She'll be fine. I'll worry about that. She won't cause you any problem once she, she's, she sees who she's dealing with. Trust me. She'll never come back unless you want her, and she's already club property, so you'll never pay. You'll have nothing to worry about. Trust me, it'll be fine. Tell her if she plans to be dropped off, then the club isn't interested and you can meet her wherever, but I need her to come alone. I've been waiting on her to come back on her own for a while now. This will not ever cause you any problems. I'm very careful and I know how to go about these things. It's really not a big deal, trust me. I would save your money for some other tale. She's free if we do this right. She knows she's mine, always has. I've tried to get her off the dumb shit for years. You could say I'm her rehab. I tried to help. I hope doing it this way is okay for you. She would be a very valuable asset to the club. If you want to meet her somewhere and blindfold her and bring her back to your place, that'll work too. I don't want you to be uncomfortable with this. No, no dumb shit. She just wasn't trained good enough. If you can tie her up and bring her back, really, it's not a problem. None of us should have to pay for her ass. It'll be fine. Neither of us will ever cause you any issue ever. It's more for a club as a whole than anything. No problems, man, I swear. If my friend's like, what the fuck? Like, you sound like you're, you're trying to kill her type shit. Um, this is, he said, I don't know. The way you started talking, you was going to kill her or something. I ain't about to get caught up in no dumb shit. I don't even know you. I don't know what she did. You say she is a snake and a thief, and then you say she's cool. No problems, man, I swear. It's not about that, okay? Sorry if this has all been a bit much. She just needs to be retrained is all. Text me later. I'm about to pass out anyhow. Send me the pic of the Eidenberg chick. I doubt I know that one, lol. Okay, I'll send a few out tonight. Forget about both of those. Got this new one here. I'll send pics. She likes being fucked in the ass by women with a strap on and likes an abusive girlfriend. She doesn't like men at all. And then he's like, uh, if she says no, tell her we're going to pass. If she, and some, he was talking about if I was not going to come alone. Uh, phone's going to die at 1%. Text you here soon. Tell her she will be compensated, but I'll deal with her when the time is right. Okay, got my phone plugged in. Should be okay for a few. Tell her money isn't an issue. It's the club rules that she will need to read through. <sighs> like, 
the shit was 2017 and like I promise you it does not get any like it doesn't make it doesn't matter how many times I read it or whatever like it's still unreal to me like what the fuck and this shit right here this is in Lafayette like this is our you know our kids our freaking friends whatever like that are going through the stuff like I was like starting to think like there's girls on here like there's pictures like how do I find people that are missing I am going to be honest with you guys. Like, if it comes to kids or if it comes to, like, this kind of shit, I will tell on you. Like, I, my, my street credibility is very, very good when it comes to everything else. But I will tell on you if you're taking little girls. I will tell on you if you're hurting kids. And this shit right here is fucking disgusting. Like... These girls, like, some of them aren't even 18 years old. And just to hear the way that you guys, like, just start fucking talking is fucking disgusting. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just another day. Another thing. And, like, they get rid of girls' cars. Like, these girls, like, they, nobody knows where they're at. And they're, like, they, they take their cars, they get rid of them. And who knows where they're at now, you know? Like, and they laugh at it. They laugh. And so, I did, I gave this information, these text messages, I gave it to a, a very high-ranking officer that did nothing with it. He's had this information the whole entire time and has done nothing with it. Now think about it. What does it say to you? What does that say to you? Speculative comments on my part are definitely staying in my mouth. I will make another video on that because it'll tie everything together in a really fucked up way. But um, I'll let you guys soak on that first. I'm posting all of this up there. You guys can take, do what you will with it. Um, read it. Share it with a friend. Make rumors about it. Uh, I'm sure, you know... There'll be a million stories by tomorrow that are completely not what the fuck I just said. But it is what it is. Um, I still am not 100% sure who's behind those messages. But I'm sure that I've been very close to like not being right here talking to you guys and telling you these things and I So she's full of shit, right? She's full of shit, right? <clears throat> That's what they're going to say. That's what they're going to say. So, <clears throat> this is the woman who recorded Curtis Fouts. Curtis Fouts. Now, <clears throat> it's 
See, here we have a situation. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to bring up something to read to you. So what does this say? Why do I get the feeling there is a pro-prosecution side, a pro-defense side, a group who is undecided and waiting for more information or the trial before they make up their minds, but then a totally other group that no one really admits to exist. That is pro-chaos. Pro-confusion. Interested in any outcome as long as it doesn't involve the truth. This fourth side doesn't care about Alan's innocence or guilt. Doesn't care if the trial is a success or a failure. Has no interest in anything but total obfuscation and distraction and prevention of any significant inquiry into the truth. For this fourth side, a mistrial or injustice works just fine. As long as the perception of guilt remains focused on Richard Allen. Enough so that no significant effort would be made to look further. Not a cover up, just pure chaos. So let me ask you, with the scenario as heavy, as significant as you just heard, When you have a majority of the YouTubers involved in this highlighted section, or should I say in this fourth side, because I highlighted the, the third side, which is my side. It's upsetting because we are here to talk about the truth. And yet, forever on the receiving end of pure chaos. Pure chaos. No matter how much I share with you, no matter how much serious work I do, no matter how much authenticity I bring to the table, Pure 
chaos. See, I decided today that I was going to block every single person I've ever spoken to in this Delphi case. I decided no more. I'm surrounded by a cesspool of psychotics. Hundred percent slander, defamation, make believe fantasy world accusations. Making me a bad guy. Making me a bad guy. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. That makes you feel better. See, here's the difference between you and me. <clears throat> I know myself. I know where my heart is. I know what my intentions are, and I know what I've done and what I do. See, I knew when I stepped into this YouTube arena that there would be haters. Okay. Never did I think, though, that literally everybody surrounding me would stab me in the fucking back like a mangy, filthy, rabid dog. Bite me in the ass. But hey, I look at it this way. It's something to be thankful for. You know, when people show you those true colors, hey, the sooner the better, baby. Sooner the better. Show me those fucking true colors. Show me who you are. Sooner the better. <clears throat> and it's insane. It's insane. The fact that this is the way it is, it's really inconceivable to the to the normal person. Okay, to a, your your average person could not conceive that 90% of the YouTubers are compromised. They're either local or they're paid. They are disgusting fucking scumbag compromised locals. Paid agents of chaos. Now think about how 
enormous. Something would have to be to have this kind of operation going on as a PR machine around something as simple as a double murder. For seven years. Think of the enormity of a group so invested in protecting their asses. So I actually love the haters <clears throat> because the fact that you're hating me when I know my heart and I know my integrity and I know what I am doing, you're showing me your inability to see who I am or your outright corruption. Either way, I want to be as far away from you as possible. So here's what we're going to do. You just saw a woman describing to you that these guys pretend to be young girls to lure young girls to them. Then they take the young girls as a group restrain them, beat them, rape them, then sell them. Did you not hear that part? Remember when I said, listen for the folks in the back? Emotions about the shit. I'm just like, uh, whatever. Like, Let's get back to that these people, um, this club, and they were recruiting members, guys, uh, this way. This is how they're getting, you know, people to get a hold of them. And they were having them take these girls, um, all ages, not escorts, not that it would matter. We were all the same, but I'm saying like these, some of these girls were, you know, young and some of these girls were yet were what? Some of these girls were what? Young. They were thinking they were talking to another girl online and they- uh, They were thinking they were talking to another girl online. See, those of you way in the back, you're not, you're not understanding what she's saying. That's, this is the problem. You're not understanding the words coming out of her mouth right now. Not escorts, not that it would matter. We were all the same, but I'm saying like these, some of these girls were, you know, young and they were thinking they were talking to another girl online and they thought they were going to go meet this girl and, you know, they would, they would take these girls very violently and, um, they would beat them and rape them and talk explicitly about it. And then they would tie them up and they would hold them until this club came in the middle of the night to pick up, you know, it's toys. This club came when? in the middle of the night to pick up the girls, their toys. And take them wherever to the clubhouse and um, sell them or, or do other terrible things to them. And um, so I, I said, look, I was like, I told my friend I was. So. With the seriousness of this shit, we have time for people causing absolute chaos 
absolute chaos on YouTube or, or so around these murders with the seriousness of this type of thing, we have space and time for people causing absolute fucking chaos in this community. Hmm? Oh, yeah, we do. Because guess what? You make excuses for them. You give them a pass. The very people doing this, causing chaos, you give them a pass. You make excuses for the fact that they are doing this. So here's your chance, chaos agents. <clears throat> The one and only chance you'll ever have on this channel. See, I'm tired of the lies. Tired of the slander. Tired of the backstabbing. I'm tired of the chaos. Click the link. You're right, Radar. You are right. I'm thankful that they show their ass. I thank you for showing your ass. Fool me once, shame on me. Uh, wait, wait. Fool me once. Uh, fool. Um, fool me. Fool me. Fool me. You won't fool me again. Click the link. So, oh no, I'm not asking you, uh, Allie. This is for all the gaslighters, the chaos agents. Got a problem with me? Click the link. <clears throat> You're going to show your face. You're going to show your face. So uh, turn the camera on. Click the link. All whiny bitches, welcome. The link is for anyone that got a problem. Okay, you got a problem? Click the link. Allie, you have no problem. Thank you. <laughs> All right, listen. <clears throat> it's very concerning 
okay? Because what we have here We have the sex clubs. We have the meth epidemic. Oh, they want to come in and gaslight about the meth too. Meth sex. Google it. Okay, because what do we have? We have the meth clubs. I mean, we have the sex clubs. We have the meth epidemic. Google. Okay. The meth fueled sex parties started in the gay community way back. spread on out to everyone. Now they're going after kids. Now they go after kids. Yeah, they call it chem sex. Yeah. Chem sex. It's meth sex. It's meth. Sex. Eventually, it's aimed at kids. Okay, so I uh, apologize for the seriousness of our opening segment here, but it's disturbing, isn't it? It's disturbing. You tell me why something as simple as a double homicide in a tiny fucking podunk town in Indiana has the insanity around it, the absolute chaos surrounding it that you see here in these YouTube streets and on Facebook and Reddit. Matter of fact, I might feel like calling some names. Kimberly Stavrakis Withers. I'm sorry, but you do realize the prof is mentally unstable and crime night threatened to blow up the Abbey and Libby ballpark. You have been deceived. Mentally unstable? Mentally unstable? Okay. Sure. Rick Snay. He's obsessed. I doxed him one time. Spooky, so kooky. Prof is so damn irrelevant.
Who's your mama? Noe and the prof are straight out of the deliverance. Woman doing impossible things. Doctor, teacher, prof, lab assistant. Absolute chaos, absolute chaos. Oh yeah, but, but we make excuses. Oh yeah. Let us think of five excuses so that we can give this individual a pass for that behavior. Let's make that a victim. Let's make that guy a victim. <clears throat> okay. Well, time has passed for our uh, link to be clicked. So What I'll do at this point, I will do a commercial break. And uh, afterwards, we will allow anyone to click the fucking link and uh, join if anyone wants to join. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Is this it here? Yes, it is. Because uh, I've decided I'm whatever aggravates the shit out of these people, I'm going to do more of. So uh, we'll be having fun tonight. Um, so let's get into this. First thing I'm going to do. Let's see. Uh oh, let's try it again. Where is it? Oh, that didn't work. Well, why not? Oh, okay. Is it not going to work? It has to be MP4. Oh. Let's see. Guess I'll have to put something together. It's different. Let's see. Let's see, I'm trying to get here to, uh, I can't show the video because it's a wrong format, so I'm trying to just make some uh, stills to share with you. That's going to be okay. Okay. Let's see if I can get these together. Yeah, let's, <laughs> Carol. Yeah, let's get this party started, Carol. Let me see, this will work. We'll do, I'll do three, let's do three, okay. Do that one.
Okay. And then let's do another. Let's say uh, this one. And we'll do one more. See, I'm a little, I, I, I'm going to laugh it off, but, uh, okay. People want to, want to whine about things that I do as an independent human being who chooses to do what the hell I want to do. We'll do a few things that people don't like. Okay. We'll do some things that people don't like. All right. First, let's do this. Let's say, uh, see if I can get this together. Let's see. Let's see if I can add this. Let's see. Uh, computer. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, what is that? What is that? That's a website where I sell photography. Okay, that's what that is. That's one website that I sell photography on. Uh, let's see. If I can pull up another, well, that's good enough. Okay, good enough for now. Oh, and there are some of the photos. Those are some of the photos that you can purchase in the canvas on wood, on metal, any size imaginable. But apparently, uh, selling photography is frowned upon. Okay. And uh, So anyway, I s encourage you to uh, go and visit the prof prick at pixels.com, this, uh, this website where I sell my artwork. Trust me, I'm only making three to five bucks off of a photo if I sell it. Uh, it's not like it's a money-making operation. I decided to make it available to you because it's nice. Okay, it's nice photography that some people might like. Um, it's just insane. Uh, what else did I get a, 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 a criticism for? My drone footage. Wow, that's incredible. So I go and I take amazing drone footage for the people of, uh, of my channel. Okay, I go, I go to Indiana. Yes, a 40-hour drive each way. And uh, I take hours and hours of drone footage, you know, which is just as good as my photography. Um, I come back and I make tons of videos with that drone footage and, uh, and I, uh, I put beautiful, amazing music to it. You know, I try to make really nice drone videos of the Delphi area of areas that are important to me. I try to make nice drone videos. And uh, I put them in a playlist, and I called it the Delphi movie, or whatever I called it. Oh, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem that I recorded drone footage and put it in a playlist for the viewers of YouTube. Okay. What the fuck do you guys want? So what do you want? So what do you actually fucking want from me? Okay. 
you prefer me not to go and check out the area in which I discuss every day so that I actually know what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay. So I travel to, to Indiana, to Delphi and Indianapolis so that I can walk the trails in Delphi. I can go investigate Wilson Bridge. I can, uh, Check out the crime scene. I can do, I can look, go into the stupid ass hybrid. I can do a whole investigation, drive the back roads of Delphi so that I understand from a, a different perspective. And I choose to bring my cameras and my drone with me. And all I got in return when I posted all that shit, criticism, criticism, slander, slander, you know, right. Right. Interesting chaos, interesting negativity and chaos that you fuckers bring and you bring nothing to the channel. I mean, you to the to the to the subject, you bring nothing to the subject. You know, it's very interesting. It's just absolute chaos and insanity. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Like, what have you done? I'd like to know, do you have a channel? If you do have a channel. I'll tell you, troll. Troll. I just sniped the fuck out of a troll. Uh, it's a 40 hour drive when you consider that I have to fucking take a three hour break every 12 hours. I have to stop and put gas. I mean, fuck all of you, okay? Fuck all of you, trolls. Like, I, I love the fact that you come in to argue about pointless shit. Yes, it took me 40 hours to drive each fucking way, dumbass. Like, if you coming here, you don't know what the hell I did. I drove from Utah, drove from the Colorado-Utah border to Indianapolis. You try it in one shot without a hotel. You try it. And, and you just proved my point here. Okay, you proved my point because you came in to nitpick what I'm telling you, which is it took me 40 hours to drive. Okay, you come in to nitpick that? Fine, that's fine, that's fine. You just proved that you're coming in to argue, argue the irrelevant. Okay, because it doesn't matter if it took me 50 hours or 20 hours to drive. However fucking long it took me to drive, I drove to put my boots on the ground, to take nice photography for my channel members, take nice, nice drone footage, okay? Then I drove back, expended a large amount of dollars to do so. And the fact that I put it in a playlist on YouTube garners criticism. The fact that I sell the prints or whatever on the stupid website where I make five bucks for per sale. That's a problem. <clears throat> interesting. It's very interesting. You guys, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. These things. Um, so I got another one. I got another one because, uh, because here's another one. I tell you, you motherfuckers smoke, smoke so much meth, you don't know how to even talk. Okay. So the criticism is that I, oh, let me get to it. I talked about adrenochrome, which if people watch that, they're, they're, that makes our side look bad. First of all, fucker. There's no our side, dumbass, okay? Here's, there's this side, the fucking truth, okay? So here's the smallest, the tiniest violin you've ever seen, okay? Your side already looks fucking bad, okay? Piece of advice, I hate to break it to you, 
your side already looks bad, dumbass. Okay, now, this little violin right here that's so sad for your side that looks like fucking lunatics already, um, there's no making you look any worse. Okay, now for my side, which is a truth, okay, you don't like that I mentioned adrenaline, okay, because obviously you're retarded, so you don't understand what adrenaline is. Because I actually, what I spoke about that day was adrenaline. And I said, the thing about adrenaline is you killed those girls at the height of fear when one's watching the other die, something like that. Adrenaline rises in the body. Okay. So I was not talking about uh, anything other than adrenaline in the, in the victims of the Delphi murders. Okay. But you like to gaslight, twist words, and do dumb shit. So you turn that into talking about adrenochrome and killing babies. Well, guess what? That happens too, dumbass. But uh, since you are a, I don't know, libtard, snowflake, uh, pansy, you don't understand that these things are real. Okay? Okay. Um, so... That is what it is. So I figured I'd tell a Sasquatch story. Since you don't like since you don't like me uh, making your side look crazy. All right, so here's you go. You guys want to hear a Sasquatch story? Sasquatch? Okay. This will really make your side look crazy. <clears throat> So, I'm not going to tell you where, because no way on earth am I going to tell you any details about my life, okay? But oh, Sasquatch. So, uh, so this summer, this past summer, my little son and I, my little four-year-old, oh, by the way, yeah, the shit that you do to me with the doxing, the stalking, harassment, and all of that, you do realize that I am a, a father to both a 21-year-old and a 4-year-old. Yeah, that's important to know, by the way. But yeah, so the whole doxing me and putting my life at risk and my 4-year-old's life at risk, I do take offense to it, and it matters, but it's a whole other subject. Um, so I decide to, uh, to go camping. Decide I'm going to go camping. And I say, hey, uh, let's bring the uh, let's bring the uh, tent. Okay, let's do it in the tent. And of course, you know, I'm always packing. I, I, I don't go no, don't, no, I don't go nowhere if I ain't packing. So, you know, I'm packing because I'm ready. If, if a Sasquatch comes up to my tent, he's going to get blasted. Um, and I have my dog because I want an early warning. Okay, so I have the dog. And I uh, have the four-year-old, and I have the ten. So we go to one of the most, uh, it's one of the most famous Sasquatch sighting zones in the United States of America. Yeah, there we do. We do. And uh, while we're there, I say, hey, let's pitch the tent. You know, we're going to stay a few days. So I pitch the tent. And, uh, well, wouldn't you know it, the very first night, the very first night, what do I hear? Uh, so so uh, the very first night, what I do, we all get in the tent. You know, I say, okay, it's time to go to bed. You know, it's getting dark. So it gets dark. We all go in the tent. And uh, I tell the baby, settle down. You know, I tell the dog, go sit there. And, uh, and so we all kind of get ready to chill out. And just as soon as I hit the, uh, the bed... I hear the weirdest sound. It's like, uh, it sounded literally like a big man trying to imitate uh, some dog sounds. <laughs> okay, some dogs, some, some weird dog howl bark type sounds. So I said, what the fuck? And I could notice the direction it's coming from. It was in my north, it was to the north of me. So I said, whoa. I said, well, that's the weirdest fucking dog I've ever heard in my life. But, okay. Like, so hopefully that's going to be it. 
Um, so, so I, I hear the, I hear the dog sound. That's not a dog. And I think, damn. And, uh, not even five minutes later, clack, clack, two huge wood knocks, very loud wood, wood knocks. Now, of course, I'm crazy. I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm ruining it. I'm making our side look bad. So let me ask you, what is a wood knock? What animal on the face of the earth has the uh, ability to grab a baseball bat and hit a tree with it or uh, another stick the size of a baseball bat or something? So tell me. No answer? Okay, great, because it's the Sasquatch. So so I hear the, I hear the uh, two wood knocks. <clears throat> And I thought, wow, well, that's hellacious. Then, then I knew absolutely what those dog sounds were. Okay, so the so the minute I heard the two wood knocks, uh, you know, I'm at high alert, and I and I'm like, oh my goodness! And it came from the exact same spot, the uh, to my north that the uh, the dog sounds came from. And I thought, oh my god, God, whew. now now I knew it was there. Well, 20, 30 seconds to a minute later, on the other side of the valley, like uh, I would say three quarters of a mile from where, the, where I was, so maybe a mile from where the other one was, two wood knocks, cow, cow. So... I'm petrified now. I'm laying there and I'm thinking, whoa, first time I've ever heard Sasquatch. <laughs> and uh, interesting because not another peep the rest of the night. Okay. Well, what do you know? The next night. Okay. Next night we get in the bed. Got right like here. What sounded like a pack of coyotes going ballistic about a mile or, or three quarters of a mile to my north same direction exactly where the night before i heard i heard the uh wood knocks but a little further and i'm thinking are those coyotes so i listen and then i'm like well yeah i think those are coyotes but suddenly one or two of them made a weird sound like a howl or like a screech or, you know, like, like a dog in pain type of sound. And uh, then they all stopped. They all stopped. Well, sure enough. Um, so so I so yeah, the when the coyotes shut up. 20, 30 minutes pass. I don't know. You know, a little interval of time passes. And sure enough, a single wood knock. Pow! Other side of the valley. Pow! Single wood knock. Now I was there for three more nights. <clears throat> Not a single sound. Not a single sound. Uh... Hey, hopefully I made your side look bad, okay? Hopefully. Next time I'll tell you my UFO story. Not tonight, though. Um, so I told you, see, we did have a gaslight nest uh, puta come in to try to argue with me, uh, but I told you the time was at for over. She was too late. Okay, so she was too late. So, uh, hey, anyone else, anyone else want to join? Um, please click on the uh, YouTube studio. I mean, the uh, 
this the StreamYard link here so you can come in the studio. Yeah, for Pitts. That's where I was. That's where I was. Four Pitts says, I spent five months camping the Rockies up and down the front range. That's where I was, but I'm not telling you where. Because <laughs> these motherfuckers stalk. I mean, they literally stalk. I'm not telling my camping spot. But yeah, I was in my favorite camping spot. <clears throat> yeah, Four Pitts. That's where I was. That's where they live. Um, so, um, Digital says, sweatshirt design. I believe it's Sasquatch and the Prof. Well, that's a nice one. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's actually a good idea. I was on Rampart Range Road and had an ATV encounter. Whoa, tell, it, tell me about it in the chat. All right, good night, French. I see good night. Uh, French is out of here. French is out of here. Sasquatch does a lot of wood knocks and breaking of timber. Yeah. Yeah, I know, because I already knew what to hear. I mean, what that sound was, I noticed it, because otherwise I, I would have not understood the sound. But, I mean, it was very, very clearly wood knocks. All right, so. Uh, I thought about dressing up as Sasquatch to scare my neighbor. But I didn't want more people to move. There. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, look. Um, wait. What did uh? All right. Let's see. Uh, oh, look. We got a. We got someone clicked in. I got someone kicked in. All right, y'all. I'm just seeing any comments I missed before I bring the guest on. We got someone in the waiting room. All right. Uh, I think you did it for the people to remind everyone this really happened and you did it at your own expense. Commendable. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bobby Smith. Yes, but instead, no, it's a problem that I have photography and, and drone footage. I was mean tonight. Those hurtful people pushed my butt and smuck has blocked me for no reason whatsoever. I caught him a schmuck somewhere. I swear sometimes nice people just get shit on and taken advantage of. That's what's happening. That is currently what is happening. And it's like I read you the, uh, the thing. Uh, There he is. What's up? Who's that? Who's that? What's up? Loud and clear. Loud Can and you clear. hear me? Yeah, you're loud and clear. All right. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I was just, uh, well, you might have heard I was telling a stupid uh, Sasquatch camping story. That was 100% true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi, Rachel D. Um, well, thanks for um, joining me, uh, letting me join in. Um, I saw a few comments that came in or uh, messages on the chat here on uh, the, the chat. <laughs> um, but I just thought I'd 
you know, join in. I uh, haven't been doing much of this stuff lately, but uh, I wanted to bring up uh, something uh, that you haven't touched on this evening, which hopefully that's okay with you. Pardon me? <laughs> I want to bring up uh, the, this uh, this individual who uh, popped out of nowhere. I probably ran into one of his videos uh, uh, two weeks ago, and his channel's called uh, "Cold Case with CJ." You heard of that? Oh, channel, uh, unfortunately, right? yes. I, I am familiar with that uh, individual you're discussing. All right. Well, CJ, I, I may be wrong, but it's Charles from Kokomo. I, I believe he's uh, in the Air Force, or which kind of would make sense. You got Grissom there. Uh, I'll call him Charlie if you don't mind. Uh, you know, you can, you know, I'm kind of like, like him, I guess. I would be JC, Jose Cruz, if you want to call me Jose Cruz, but I'm Noe. Everybody knows I'm Noe. You can also call me David or the bird. But this individual, JC, I, I just wanted to address him. And uh, if you don't mind, uh, I noticed that his channel is very new and uh, he uh, he just has popped out of nowhere and he uh, he has addressed me a couple of times. I, I went on his channel and, and went to his community page and I left a message or a, a comment and, and uh, then the next day, I guess he had me on, uh, you know, he talked about me on, on his live stream and he he claimed that I sent him a video of, that reminded him of the Sicario movie. Uh, I don't I don't remember doing that. Uh, what I do remember is posting a short on my channel and tagging him, which is completely different. You know, I, I did not send him anything, but uh, he uh he said that he got scared and um well i mean i was like well this guy's a soldier what the hell why would he be scared but he said i scared him and uh i guess what he he claims that that the pro defense, he, he he grouped me with the pro defense, me and yourself, and he claims that we are we are um, the problem in the pro defense, and I wanna. That's what I was a, alluding to with my story. Yeah, I know, I know. So I want I want to make sure uh, I want to make clear that to this this guy uh charlie that that um i have never you know i have never voiced my opinion on on richard allen or kathy allen or the families um i've never spoke about the family when i came out here you know i I spoke about my interaction with Keg and Klein while being incarcerated with him, and and that took in diff took off in different directions, and then it lasted a few months. It died out, and then and then you know uh, I've been I've been uh, having issues with trolling, you know, with, with the trolls, and my main focus has been like exposing, uh, so. So I wanted to clear with him that, you know, I'm not, 
You know, I'm not, I don't have any, uh, you know, opinion as to like the guilt or, or, or innocence of, of, of Richard Allen. That's something that's going to be determined in trial. You know, uh, I, I'm not pro prosecution either. Um, so he grouped me in that. And, and he said that people like you and I are, are the reason why we're, we're destroying the pro defense, you know, Whatever they do and, you know, like raising money for, for the experts, you know, I, I have no opinion on that. You know, that's, if they want to do that, that's them. Um, so, so this guy comes out of nowhere. Uh, I went to look at his channel and I believe it's uh, February 25th when he joined and he's got over a thousand subscribers he he's got crazy amount of, of views you know and i'm like well where did this guy come from i noticed he's got two active mods dm cooper <laughs> interesting interesting name i i followed i watched him earlier today and i followed dm cooper and noticed his comments then he also has the unraveling as a mod there. Um, like typical, you know, I immediately got blocked. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm banned from that channel. Um, and then he, he talks about, you know, how he, he is going to make fun of the people who are who are not serious. He, he says, we are not serious people. Uh, and, and he, uh, he's going to make fun of them or about, I'm pretty sure he's talking about us. So my, my point in all this with this guy here with Charlie, uh, is like, where did you come from and what are you trying to bring to the table? Um, chaos, chaos. Chaos. That's <laughs> chaos. Drama. Mm -hmm. Bashing. And uh, excuses for Rick Snay's bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Making Rick the victim. Yeah, he he went on to, to mention that, okay, that Rick has been through a lot uh, and, and, and started pointing out some things, but, you know, he, he totally omits what what rick has done as well you know he he said that rick called my job to try to get me fired because i i call i i accused him of molesting his daughter okay and that's wrong that is absolutely wrong and rick knows this okay and what we're talking in this what we're talking about this what happened was that rick Rick on his on his Delphi After Dark Facebook group was telling his his uh, members that that I was accused that Kagan told Kagan told him that I that I was accused of raping eight to ten women in Wabash, right? So so that was before he had blocked me on Delphi After Dark Facebook group. So I read, I read the comments and I, I came in and I said, I said, uh, I, you know, I, I said something to Rick about it and that pissed me off. So then I went on a live stream with Greeno and I threw Rick a low punch. Okay. Um, I announced that just to, to get him back for a, he called me a serial rapist. That's what it was. He called me a serial rapist. And, and Rick claimed that he did that because some of his members were asking what, what was going on between Noe and Kagan outside the Peru court when they were screaming at each other. So he said, oh, Kagan called him, a, 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 accused him of raping eight to 10 women and he's a serial rapist. So I took offense to that. 
So I turned around, went on a live stream with Anthony Greeno, and I made my announcement. Okay, it, it was a low punch. Last summer, him and I apologized to each other, which was fruitless. And that's what happened. Now, him calling my job was not had nothing to do with that. He called my job because I was on a live stream with you, Prof. And I was announcing that Deb Slaughter had told me, and I showed receipts, that Rick was behind the obituary. She pointed the finger at Rick. And I was announcing that. I was not blaming Rick. Well, he took off with that. He took off with saying, saying that I was blaming. I was the one blaming. I, after I showed him the receipts, Deb, it, Deb is the one who pointed blame towards you. Well, next thing you know, he, he's calling my job. And we know the story. So just became completely toxic, okay? And it, it all ended up with what happened on March 18th outside of the Allen County Courthouse. And while, while I'm talking about this, thanks, bro, for giving me uh, this chance. Uh, I am aware, I am aware of Rick's apology and I acknowledge his apology and, but I am not ready to accept it. I do acknowledge and I do agree with him that we need to stay our separate ways. Um, I'm not here bashing Rick. I'm just clarifying what CJ is reporting on his channel. Um, and, and obviously taking Rick's side. It's obvious that he's taking Rick's side. But clarifying that, you know, I, I acknowledge his apology. I'm not ready to accept it because, and, and the reason for that is because how many times have, have Rick said, okay, well, I'll, we're, we're, let's try to work things out. And on his very next live stream, it takes 30 seconds for him to start slandering and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, no, he came into this because he wanted to get into Holly's pants, <laughs> comments, uh, jailhouse niche. And, and it goes on and on and on and on, right? But uh, the last time, actually, actually, CJ, Charlie was his guest, and, and, and he, like a week ago on Delphi After Dark, and that was the first time I saw, I saw CJ. And uh, I did, you know, I did hear Rick's apology, and I acknowledge it. Uh, I agree with him, we need to stay away from each other and um but i'm not ready to accept it you know and i'm just being flat honest you know i uh the things that i my behavior at allen county i had announced ahead of time and this is why i know that jinx was behind the studio but uh um yeah behind the scenes and here in the studio on the way uh chatting and 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 demanding that you take accountability that when have has she ever taken accountability for the things that she's done oh none okay. of them no, no, it's I all would, you know it's i would have never i would have never filmed her or in the archive had she not ever filmed us in peru mm. and i announced it it's Maybe all the that's best choice Maybe not, maybe not the best choice, but I announced it. They're accusing me of stalking. No, I told you guys, I'm going to go look, up to you and film you. They knew the I was coming. Chaos agents. Here's the point. Absolute chaos. Okay. That's what I want to focus on because that's what they've done. And that's what they do. And that's mm -hmm. their position. That's why they're here. And, uh. What else are you going to say about it? It's absolutely. I was going to say that they knew they knew that I, I was going to do that. I I told them I'm going to get bossy, uh, frost, jinx, in the archive, and snake. I'm going I'm going to ask you the questions that the community wants to know. Okay. 
uh, and I did. And I, the monkeys off my shoulder. I mean, uh, Frosty and Bossy. Bossy didn't show, so I didn't get her. But I did. I did what I said. What I was was out to do at the at the courthouse. And unfortunately, it ended up in in us getting banned. You know, I I was I wasn't you know expecting that to happen, but I was expecting to confront them and, and just you know ask you, hey, what's going on? Kathy Clendenning clearly told me in the archive is behind Delphi Strong. We know that we know it's it's a fact. We know it's the chaos that you're talking about. They're just creating chaos through these channels, you know, and targeting specific people. Why? Why? Yeah, why? That's what they do. Look, I'm just a dude, man. I'm just a dude who came out and informed on a pedophile. That's it. And the, the kind of crap that I've gone through, it, because I talked to the prof and I talked to Holly, Holly Lowry, that's, that's why. That's why. It's not because, you know, any other reason. But look, here's the, here's the perfect example, prof, of the type of chaos. Oh, they love showing their guns. That's what yeah. they like to do. Yeah, they love... The, starting here from Kokomo who's in the Air Force, you know, is, talks about how how creators uh, have announced and, and posted their guns, and he's scared to go to any hearings because these creators post their guns. And look at him. He's an Air Force uh, member doing the same thing. I don't get it. Shameful. Mm hmm And and he said that my video scared him. But I I sent I I made I made a comment on that video and I explained the purpose of the video. It was up for half a day. I tagged him. I tagged two people. I tagged Honeybee, which Honeybee had made a made comments about Noe is broke. No, he cannot pay his electric bill. Because one day I decided to make a live with gloves and a jacket, right? So I posted a, a video where I'm counting some money, where I'm, I was completing a money transaction to Mexico, and I'm sending a message to the person whose money is going to. That's all it is. It's totally legal. A legal transaction. Now... If I want to wear a mask and all that shit is besides the point, man. You know? But they take it around with it. I knew, I knew it. You know, I, I tagged them. I said, I, I made a comment about it. And it's like he he uh, he uh, argues that that he's going to uh, say whatever he wants. He's going to it's like they can, they can, but God, God forbid, we do anything because we are, we are the problem. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like you don't like the fact that I fucking said uh, Sasquatch, I mean, UFOs. And photography. I mean, the okay. big old, you don't like my photography. Mm-hmm. Fuck off. Like you do you think I care what the fuck you have to think or like about me? No. Guess what? Keep hating because you're showing me who you are. And that's all I want because you know, I like knowing who you are. I mean, all of these motherfuckers have flashed their guns. Why? Does it make you a man? I mean, do I have guns? Do I have to flash them? Exactly. Are, are they made for flashing or are they made for using? Let me let me tell you something about this gun flashing shit. You know, um, where I'm from in Brownsville, when we flash our guns, we don't hold them like this, CJ. We hold them like this, ready to use. 
So whoever taught you to do this, the Air Force, whatever, whoever it is, it's childish. Uh, you pull the gun like this and you shoot your target, whether it's game or whoever, whatever else. Not what is this? Um, I, I, but I want to touch on something about Rick Snay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because because there seems to be a fucking problem. And, and I would like everyone who watches this either now in the chat or later. People seem to have a hard time. And, and you know, I've tried my best to explain it to those who matter. And uh, people don't seem to fucking understand. So I'm going to break it down real fucking simple. Real simple. Okay. This whole Rick Snay is the victim thing is complete and utter total bullshit. And, and it really infuriates me because I hate when people victim blame. And, and all of this fucking crew is real good at victim blaming. Okay, all of them. Every single chaos agent. They want to victim blame. I mean, Jinx came in tonight. She tried to victim blame. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so let's talk about Rick Snay with me because people don't seem to understand why do I have a problem with anyone supporting Rick Snake? Well, it's very fucking simple. It's very fucking simple. I have a child. Okay. I did nothing to Rick Snay in terms of doxing, in terms of harassing, in terms of slandering. Rick Snay started with me because I talked to you and Holly, okay? Now, what he decided to do was let himself be used by Thomas Frost, okay? So what did he do? Thomas Frost got a background check on me, handed off to Rick. Rick went on his show, doxed me in broad fucking daylight on his show, okay? The first time. Gave my name, okay? Then he subsequently gave my town. Then the next day, he gave my name again. Then he gave my town. Then the next day, my name, my town, my name, my town for months. Okay? Those videos right now, at this very moment, they're still on his channel. Okay, you mm -hmm. go to Delphi After Dark, yeah. you're yeah. going to yeah. find. He's got a bunch of me. As a well. bunch of videos with my fucking legal name, with my town. Okay? All of these idiots in this group sucking on his small balls, they believe the actual murderers of these fucking girls are out there walking the earth. Okay? So Rick's, Rick Allen is totally innocent? Okay. Well, tell me, if Rick Allen is totally innocent, aren't the actual killers walking around the face of the earth right now? Okay. So... How responsible is it for you to give my name and location when the actual murderers of these girls are walking around the face of this earth and would have a reason to come and do me and my little fucking four-year-old harm? Oh, but it's funny. It's funny, isn't it? So it's funny that you get to dox my name and my location, putting my life at risk and the life of my four-year-old child, who I'm the only caretaker for, that's fucking funny. When you know the murderers are walking around free men, that's funny. Okay? And for everyone that's giving Rick, Rick Snay a pass for that, do you actually think that that's funny? You think he gets a pass for that?
that still to this day on his channel is my name and my location numerous times. You think that's okay? I so mean, just okay. just go watch the uh, the live stream that him and Frosty and Jinx did on Labor Day weekend, September second or fourth of last year. Thomas Frost is wearing a, a Colts jersey. That whole two hours, man, is nothing but Holly Prof and Noe. Shaming. Uh, they even called you that night, bro. Yeah, yeah, they called me that? multiple times. But this is what I'm saying. Everyone going on to Snay's show, when he still has videos doxing me, and my location, when we still have killers out here walking the face of this earth that would want to come do me harm, you're okay with that. You're okay with yourselves. You think it's okay to go on Snay show, to endorse Snay, to support Snay, when still on his channel to this very day, any of these motherfuckers can go there and find my name and location. You think it's okay. That's why I have a problem with all of you guys. OK, because you don't give a fuck about my child who's still alive. OK, those two girls in Delphi, they're not coming back. Those politics that you're aligning with Rick, that he thinks Rick Allen is is completely innocent, that all that bullshit, that's fine and all. OK, those girls are gone. My child is still here and you're putting his life at risk. And you're going on a channel where that guy is still there. I mean, that guy still has that shit on I mean, like, my channel. I mean, that, my name, my location on his channel, and you're going support him. You, you know, like, I know that they'll argue that, like, I posted his address on a community post. Uh, and But Rick, Rick had announced on his show that he was ready to make a deal with myself and with Holly Lowry. And he said, I will give you my address so that you can file a restraining order against me. Okay. And, and we can all agree not to talk about each other. And, and, and I was gonna, you know, I was gonna take him serious, but like I said, the very, within 30 seconds of, of announcing this, he starts mocking me, calling me a liar, a jailhouse snitch, and this. And I said, oh, really? Well, guess what? I don't need your address because I have it already, and I posted it on a community page, right? Uh, and, but, you know. Um, but hey, Freco Joy says he still has videos with my minor daughter's picture in it. Yeah. See what I mean? See what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it's like him and I in, in Delphi, Indiana, we, we talked. Uh, the ver the first time we, we had the encounter where we came face to face uh, at the end of that hearing at the end of the day we talked and I told him look bro this is what's going on with me this is how I feel and vice versa and he said okay I'll take down I said you know this video you make with Kevin and Anya calling me a a, a, a thief I've never that's the last thing I've ever done you know I've done other crimes but not you know that's offensive to me. He said, I'll take it down. Bullshit. It's still up there. Calling me a thief, calling Kishti a thief, you know. So it's like, to me, it's like he he's not sincere, you know. He needs all these videos up there. He needs his channel operating because that is his very small source of income. I don't get that, prof, you know. I don't get that, but... Well, I, ju I just don't get the behavior. It's like, no. I'm the bad guy, okay? I'm the bad guy. But you're going on his channel, and that guy right there, he has my name, my location, doxed, putting my child at risk, and we got killers out there, but I'm the bad guy. See, none of these fucks have none of these fucks have kids. That's I think the problem is none of these motherfuckers have kids. That's why they don't fucking get it. They don't get it. They don't fucking get it. 
It's like none of them have kids. They don't get how you would feel if someone doxed you. You're covering okay. murders that are highly fucking, it, it's a volatile conversation. And these people are walking out free, right, walking around out there. And you give that guy a pass, like Snake. Here, bottom line, Snake. Rick Snake. You should remove the doxing. He should. Of my fucking name, my fucking location, and Freckle Joy's fucking daughter, and anything else that's bullshit. Okay? Like you saying, fuck me, fuck me, and doing all that stupid shit around that, the earth. That, these that, girls. Okay? Bullshit. And I'll never get off of it. Okay, I'll never, I'll never give you a pass, and I'll never give any of these motherfuckers a pass. Go on your, suck your, because that is inappropriate. It's unacceptable, and you need to remove it. And until you do, there's no, there's no getting over it. There's no getting past it. So that's where I see. I'm not getting off of the, my my fucking mark. I'm especially not. when when you're advocating for what you say you're advocating for. It's not what he's supposed to be. Supposed to be, yeah. I think right now he's advocating for Richard Allen. Supposed to be, and Kathy Allen, which I mean, supposed to be. Well, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's that. That I mean, that's it on that note. Yeah. Before I get off here, Prof, I'll just uh, have another little thing I want to say in regards to what we dub, we call it like the troll farm. And, and and don't even argue, oh, well, it's not it's not me. It's, it, we, it, it is you, okay? Um, all these videos, Delphi Dummies and Delphi Strong and, and the YouTube plugs and all that stuff, you know, um, coming around my vehicle and, 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 and putting Ashley Schaefer stickers, you know, that's why I reacted the way I reacted in Allen County. Okay. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. Um, but to, um, to, uh, uh long chris long and, and 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 thomas frost and jinx and bossy and you know just because you're 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 not out there and i can't see you i mean we already know dude we we've got people who have told us what you guys did behind the scenes okay and, and there are receipts okay so to them you know i just want to say you know i you guys took me down. Snay, Greeno, Long, you guys took me down, okay? But I'm not going away, and I'm just changing my attitude, okay? I took the monkey off my shoulder. It's gone. I did what I said I was going to do, okay? But Chris Long, you were right here, bro. You were right here, okay? And you wouldn't lower your window and address me, bro, and say, oh, no, it's not me or no, or defend yourself, say something to me. You were right here, bro, okay? So I'm changing my attitude. My, I have a, my channel, you know, it's just gonna be what it is right now. And you know, I, I already went, now that's my channel. The ones, the one channel that you guys took down was my niece's channel. I couldn't say that. I couldn't, I couldn't um, appeal the complaints and the strikes or whatever it is that you guys did. But you guys just took over my, my niece's channel and did whatever you guys wanted with it. You know, with the, the, the trolls, the amount of views, that was crazy. Um, artificial generate, non-human generated trolls that you guys sent to my channel. Thomas Frost, you've explained it very well how that works. So have you, Rick Snake. So I don't have to even argue the point 
I know it was you guys. You even announced it, Rick Snay. When I uh, Thomas Frost went went on that same evening and made a whole live and tried to get this girl Sarah Elizabeth uh, to 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 announce that I had been in, inappropriate to, to her. Oh. Uh, uh, and deleted it like a bitch. Deleted yeah, it like it's a them. Bitch. It, so, so you take the channel. That's fine. There's some videos there that I will never recover. The very old videos of my niece and I uh, playing guitar, and that's fine, you know. Uh, but I've taken, uh, you know, I'm taking a different attitude. Uh, I, like I said, I've already. I was right here face to face with with uh, with. Chris Long and he wouldn't lower his window. So yes, I recorded your truck. I recorded your your your, your vehicle and I posted it. Well, you guys did the same thing to me. Okay, so uh, I hear all these things about lawsuits. The Kyra De Bruin, Eric De Bruin, Thomas Frost, Long, Snay. They're all you know. I'm getting sued. Well, I got a file too to present. Okay. And just like you guys, I do do know people in the legal system who can assist me. You know, it sucks because I don't have time for it. But if you guys want to take me, sue me and take me to court, that's fine. But I do have documentation, lots and lots and lots of documentation with uh, Chris Long with your drone, where you have filmed me in Delphi, Indiana. Uh, Jinx, you filmed me in the courthouse in, in Peru, Indiana. And you want to come in here in this uh, behind the scenes chat and, and re demand that we take accountability? I did. I I told you guys ahead of time what I was going to do. Here's your accountability. The next thing I'll be focusing on is smurfing and uh, the role of CVS in the smurfing epidemic in the 2000s. So uh, be prepared to be pissed off when I discuss methamphetamine. Oh, and that's all you, bro. Right. It, it's like CJ says, you know, do what you do, do you do, do you. <clears throat> All right, man. Thanks for uh, giving me this this time and uh, the, the chat. Uh, I think I saw somebody said uh, Pitbull. I thought I saw him mention that CJ came in the chat. I don't know, but uh, everybody, thanks in the chat and thanks, Prof. And you guys have a good night, man. Oh, all right, no. Well, uh, happy Monday. It's almost Tuesday, or it is. It is Tuesday for I you. I think it is Tuesday. All right. Good night, right. guys. See you later, Noe. All right. Well, Noe's out of here. He's out of here as quick. Uh, left as quick as he came. Jeez. All right, guys. Say goodbye to Noe. That was uh. That was sudden. It, it's, a, it's a, like I'm on a different level or, or a different plane over here. I'm like, well, all of a sudden he's gone. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you for uh, for saying um, good night to Noe and thank you to Noe. Yeah, why are they so focused on Noe? It's it's fucking insane. Insane. But it's always Noe and Holly and Prof. And Noe and Prof. Like, okay, so so be it. Hello, haters. <clears throat> Where would I be without you? Um, I don't know. I was trying to look at these uh, comments as he was talking and... Uh, there were a couple good ones, but I don't know if I want to go back that far and try to dig them up. I want to say hello to everyone. Uh, I just noticed so many people came in that I did not say hello to because I, either I was talking or Noe was talking uh, recently. or I was talking earlier, but for everyone who came in, hello to you, Freckle Joy, Foxy Lady, uh, Lisa, Lily Shaw. Um, digital came back in. I think he had must have gone away. Is a God thing. Uh, so many people came uh, into the chat. Kayla came in. What's up, Kayla? Thanks for coming. Is a God thing. Bobby Smith got out of here. Frenchie got out of here. 
whole bunch of in and out <laughs> um, while everyone was was busy. But um, I'd like to thank, uh, we had a couple super chats there. So let me put them back up because uh, I didn't get to read them out, but I'll read them out now. Let's see. Is a God thing said, Prof, look up Revelation 22, 13, 14. Notice the numbers. Also look up the symbols that represent that scripture. Looks exactly like the Norse runes, except it's Christian, not to change the subject. <clears throat> okay, I will. Thank you for the super chat, but uh, I have an amazing book. I have an amazing book. Let's see if I could link. Um, if it's possible. See if I can find this. Oh. This is one that, uh, let me post this, see if I can post this. And um, Michelle says he hasn't even been on long enough to start insulting people like that. It's becoming obnoxious rapidly. Pardon me. All right. Salty, it's a possibility, but then I don't think we'd seen the reaction we saw. Meth is a big business there, and major players involved. I cannot imagine a small pharmacy in Delphi supplies the Sudafed. Well, you guys have been fighting me on that forever. You guys have been fighting me on that forever. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'll be doing an extensive presentation on smurfing in the 2000s. Pretty sure he said the tag only had no, oh, you're talking about that? Okay. <laughs> Look, he says four pits at your service. There he is. Indiana, some weird mother tuckers. Maybe consider the perps approach for Richard for Sudafed and he refused. Imagine how bad they'd be. Well, trust me. The more I say my opinion, the madder you all will get. So uh, get ready. Thank you, Matt. Think you hate me now. <laughs> you think you hate me now. It's absolutely not just Indiana. I experienced this in Dakota, Upper Michigan. It's an old lady trying to get away from the cartels in Cali that took over. It discovered a whole other rural issue. Christy says, promise myself not to talk about the fucking Sudafed. Yeah, I know. It's fucking infuriating. <clears throat> I don't see why, you know, you know the, the, the thing that I love, here's what I really love. I watch people's behavior. I watch reactions. I watch reactions and, uh, you guys fucking reaction and some people's reaction to the conversation around meth is really fucking interesting. Hello. Like you don't understand the red flags you throw up when someone starts discussing the manufacture of methamphetamine in Indiana. I mean, uh, the literal takeaway on the last show that I did was the argument coming at me was no one cooks meth in America anymore. It's all coming from Mexico. Therefore, there's no way they're smurfing. 
You don't say. That's your argument? Yeah, it's the red flags you're throwing up because the minute I start talking about cooking meth, people lose their fucking minds. Well, guess what? You'll be losing your minds soon. But I wanted to bring it back to what we started with. Hey guys, look, take it from an expert himself. I mean, I say that with all this respect in the world, uh, Four Pits. Take it from an expert himself. The minute I bring this shit up, oh yeah. Oh, it's an uproar. <laughs> okay. You realize that when I do a presentation, I bring receipts, right? See, there's things that I know, like, like that's the thing about Joe, too, okay? Here's the thing about me and Joe. There's things that we know that we haven't spoken about yet. And that's what's really the infuriating thing when, when you guys are coming at us like we don't know what we're talking about. It's infuriating. It's frustrating. <clears throat> you see, in February 2017, you think we don't know about the Red Devil. What is the Red Devil? Well, I tried to hint at you a year ago. Of course, no one paid attention. No one paid attention. I told you that that exact batch got sold in late February, early March, and made everyone in the county sick. But you think I don't know what I'm talking about because I haven't told you the details. <clears throat> Everyone got sick that bought off that batch. And guess who was selling? Why did Keegan put him and Tony there? Why? Why did Keegan put himself and Tony there? The Red Devil. You think I don't know that everyone got sick in late February and early March to bought off that batch?
Prof talks about math. Uh-huh. Sure do. Sure do. I also say that uh, it all went down by Wilson Bridge. Since the troll forum wants to wants to say they're locking in their last words, they're locking in their ideas, their thoughts. Okay, here, lock this shit in. It all took it, it all went down at Wilson Bridge. There was Red Devil involved. People put themselves there. What's the big mystery? I mean, after all, we had the uncle and the mother both say what they were doing out there in the woods that day. We had the uncle and the mother say what was going on out there that day. Oh, but no one listened to them. No. Nope. <clears throat> Yeah, it's seen people catch fire, burn 75% of their body. Oh, my goodness. Well, guys, I'm getting tired here. Yeah, it's crickets. Crickets. Hey, Diamond Eyes, email me. Yeah, guys, uh, no, I was going to get back to the serious thing. Okay, so let me, let me not forget what I wanted to do. Let's see, I was going to pull this up again. Oh, man, what's going on now? Jeez. Maybe it doesn't want me to deal with it. Let's see. No, but you heard the girl, right? You heard her. What did she say? She was saying how bad it is. Oh, where is it? <clears throat> I can't pull it up. I'm trying them. One more time. Well, yeah, we'll just get out of here. I mean, it's um. I wonder why that little movie ain't showing it now. Okay, let's see. One more time. Oh, there it is. Okay. Boom. Emotions about the shit. I'm just like, uh, whatever. These people um this club and they were recruiting members guys uh this way this is how they're getting you know people to get a hold of them and they were having them take these girls um all ages not escorts not that it would matter we were all the same but i'm saying like these some of these girls were you know young and they were thinking they were talking to another girl online and they thought they were going to go meet this girl and you know, they would, they would take these girls very violently and um, they would beat them and rape them and talk explicitly about it. And then they would tie them up and they would hold them until this club came in the middle of the night to pick up, you know, its toys. <laughs> Yeah, 
I mean, uh, back to what I was trying to get at earlier. It's serious. It's a serious thing that we are discussing. It's serious. And I don't get the behavior. I just don't get it. The behavior that's going on. As if it's all some game. It's all chaos. and take them wherever to the clubhouse and um, sell them or, or do other terrible things to them. And um, so I, I said, look, I was like, I told my friend, I was like, you are gonna tell this man that you found a girl and you're gonna tie me up and he can come over. And when he gets here, we're gonna tie him up and I'm gonna see what, see what he has to say, I guess. <clears throat> so it's serious. It's not a popularity contest. It's not chaos central. It's real lives at stake. Good night, Carol and Amy. Good night, Amy. All right. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Keep, keep, keep your children close. Yeah, and everyone on the replay, everyone uh, watching now, everyone watching later, um, please leave a comment, hit the like, uh, Give a super chat, a super thanks. Um, check out the other videos, all that good stuff. Please support the channel. That's the point. Please support the channel. Bedtime for me, says Christy B. Good night. Good night, Christy. Other people have covered this here. Just search Judge and Jalen. Well, yes, of course. That's not the point, Salty Mella. It's not the point that other people, of course, other people have covered Jalen Rain and she's covered herself. I mean, there's the point is that this shit is serious and the chaos and the and the buffoonery. I mean, we're dealing with absolute buffoonery. It's not called for. It's uncalled for. It's not the time or the place. Good night, Carol. Good night, Diamond Eyes, K West. Good night, Christy, Lisa. Good night. All right, good night, everyone in here. Prof, take a look at the Vice documentary, Cooking with the Pied Piper. Good night, Sweet Do Shibby. Good night, Digital. Good night, Christy B. Uh, she probably said good night. Good night, Rochelle. Thank you for the super chat again. And uh, good night, Kay West. Good night, Four Pits. All right. Good night, Amy. Uh, probably said that already. Everyone who's been active in the chat, especially, I want to thank you. I was responding to someone in chat asking for her more recent interview. She's there's a there's several videos. Okay, this is not the only like anyone unfamiliar with Jalen Rain. There's a bunch more and there's some screenshots. Okay, I didn't show them today. Maybe I'll do it next time. But she's got a lot of screenshots up that are highly concerning, and uh, I did not show them, but I got them. Okay, I'm still here saying night to the ladies. Oh, okay, good. Thank you, K West. I'm, I'm going to say good night to everyone. Let's see. I caught most of you and uh, everyone else is not in the chat anymore. Everyone kind of just cooled out. <laughs> um, but yeah, Freckle Joy was here. All right. Diamond Eyes. 
Foxy Lady was here. See a bunch of people here. Lily Shaw was here. Noe was here, you know. A lot of people were here earlier in the chat that are quiet now. But, yeah, everyone, uh, if you're still here, say goodnight in the chat. Uh, Tracy Fleetwood, what up, Ch Tracy? Look at you. Okay, Tracy's here. Well, yeah, Rochelle, that's not the point. Like, why does it always have to go to extremes? Like, the point that I'm talking about cooking meth why why does why is it without which not like uh why why do you guys think that it's not a without which not it's it's like yes that too well, the fact that these locals are, are cooking the meth for themselves and for uh some money among the club doesn't mean that there's not people above them that don't need that shit. i mean i'm just i'm trying to i'm trying to understand this resistance i'm getting to talking about the locals cooking meth it's really fucking mind boggling. Well, what do you mean it all? There's no it all. There's no it all. I mean, the, the it all, you mean the entire meth trade of the United States? No, they're, they're import. I mean, guys, come on. We got brains here. They're importing. Okay. There's there's meth coming across borders. There's meth, there's, there's meth being cooked in your, in your fucking backyards, you know? I mean, Jesus Christ. It seems like the, the toughest conversation that people are fighting over. And I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it's an epidemic, it's a, and there's a lot coming across the board, especially, look, at the, it's highly location-specific, too. So, yeah, if you're in fucking Arizona, yeah, 99% of the meth in Arizona is coming across from Mexico, absolutely. But if you're in North Carolina or fucking Indiana, Ohio, there's a lot of it, the majority is being cooked in the backyards. Yeah, and I don't give a fuck because what makes you think that RA is not responsible? See that I know that's why I'm being targeted right now. Okay, here's a, the the reason you're targeting me. All you who are targeting me is because I'm implicating Richard Allen in some way. Okay, so so that's a thought experiment. It's me speculating. What's wrong with that? You're speculating that he's completely innocent and is not tied to anything. I'm speculating that he could have been tied to something like this. I'm also speculating he could be involved in the crime. Okay, because all you are all doing is speculating. None of you know his level of innocence or guilt. Neither do I. We're all speculating. So as far as Richard Allen, I'm opening the possibility that my gut is telling me that could be a part of it. So the amount of, of pushback I'm getting over that, it's, it's really insane. And it's like, so what is everyone's investment in Richard Allen? I'm just curious. Okay, I'm really, really, really fucking curious about the vicious fighting for Richard Allen such that I can't even speculate about his possible involvement because that makes me a target now. Okay. Hey, I think you guys better go target those assholes who are actually troll farm. Okay, go, go target troll farm, the ones who are actually doing damage. I am prepared to admit he could actually be implicated, if not loosely, through association, than even directly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. See, that's what I'm getting at about this thing I posted earlier. Let me put it back up to, to, to drive home this point. Okay. Got to go back and find this. Uh, where is it? It's there. Okay, so what is being said here? 
There's a group who is undecided, waiting for more information for the trial before they make up their minds. Okay, so what's wrong with being part of that group? Okay, so let's listen to this again. Pro-prosecution side, which I think is insane. Pro-defense side, which I think is insane. A group who is undecided, waiting for more information or for the trial to begin before they make up their minds, which I think is called being in the middle, waiting on more information to try to understand what happened. Okay, and then a totally other group that no one really admits to exist that is pro-chaos and pro-confusion. So do you get what I'm trying to, to get across here? That how could anyone know that Richard Allen is 100% innocent and not involved in any way and has never done a, a single thing wrong in his life, not even killed a fly? How can anyone know that he's a child murderer that murdered Abby and Libby completely by himself and he's the fucking devil and he deserves to die and be lynched right now? How could anyone know either of those things? Wouldn't a reasonable person say, we don't know, we just don't know, because nothing's been presented. We haven't gone to trial. I mean, we can speculate, we can assume, we can ponder the, the evidence that has been made public, which doesn't seem strong at all. It seems extremely bullshit. You know, what it seems like is that he's being set up because there are certain things, okay? So there's things like this, the bullet, okay? That bullet is garbage. It means nothing. Now, did it come out of his gun? How the fuck should we know? But I'll tell you this, I know ballistics. Why? Because I'm a gun owner. Why? Because I watched... Uh, documentaries and and studies on forensic ballistics. So I know ballistics. I know that there's no such thing as ejection marks as far as ballistic science. That's bullshit, okay? Ballistic science comes from the pin striking the uh, round or the firing pin or whatever you call it. So then the it's like a fingerprint okay so if you had a fired casing and you took that casing and looked at it yes you could absolutely ballistically determine which gun that came out of as far as an ejection mark or several there's it's total bullshit every single ejection is going to be different the speed that you eject the 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 force that you use there's so many ejection possibilities, how that, how that thing was actually situated in the magazine. You know, not to mention the fact that the thing was on the ground, not found when the bodies were found, which is insane to, to even speculate about or consider. Possibly planted. Okay. So, so like, yeah, you can look at all of that and say, I think he's innocent, but no, hold on. The fact that that bullet is bullshit evidence doesn't mean that he's innocent. It just means that you haven't been shown evidence that his gun was there. The fact that uh, he said he was there earlier and they tried to make us believe he was there later, that just seems like corruption. That doesn't mean he's innocent. It also doesn't mean he's guilty. You know, so yeah, in my opinion, from what we've been shown, there's nothing that shows that he's guilty and not even the confessions because all these shills want to tell you, well, he confessed. Yeah, well, anyone would confess under duress. I mean, obviously. But none of that, no matter how we slice this or which way we look at it, none of it implies guilt or innocence. 
because we don't have enough information. There's nothing, there's nothing that the public knows that can allow us to determine guilt or innocence, not even confessions. So that's what I'm trying to get at, that, that we, what's wrong with being in the middle and saying we are waiting for a, a full viewing of the evidence, a full accounting, which is what the trial is supposed to be, to try to understand what evidence is put forward, how that is defended, and, and to see what it means for Richard Allen. So there's no one side or the other. It's it's it the one side or the other is complete insanity. Okay. Now, why have I leaned towards the defense? Because it sure does look like with all the uh, lying from Tony Liggett and the insane actions from the prosecutor and the judge, it looks like shit is not on the up and up in Carroll County. And that's concerning. So, yeah, I, I'm going to favor a vigorous defense because I want to see the results of a vigorous trial. I want to see vigorous prosecutor, vigorous defense, and I want to see, like, come on, let's measure this. But like uh, our commentator said, that there's there's nothing but chaos agents. Okay, there's eight. There are agents of chaos. Sorry, I'm, I'm missing some of the chat, but I'll try to put some up. You're talking about the round? Yeah, the round. I mean, there's all kind of things. There's all these details. The case is still open. The setting up maneuvers do scream setup. Yes, but that doesn't mean... Let's say you have someone who is involved. So you're stacking the deck against them to make them the patsy. So what does it mean? Well, what if he's involved, but the whole thing is let him take the heat for everyone else involved because he's somewhat involved. So we can just stack the deck against him. Okay. He could also be totally innocent. Let's say he's totally innocent, being set up as a totally innocent outsider. But I don't, I don't get the, when, when I keep getting the same reaction, from the uh, speculating about about the whole methamphetamine angle, uh, it's red flags to me. It's like if I can't talk about that shit, something's wrong with y'all. Something's wrong with y'all. Um. Anyway, I'm tired. I said I said I was getting out of here, and uh, I ended up talking more. <laughs> Let's see. But I mean, I've tried to show you nothing but fucking. Uh, I've tried to show you nothing but fucking objective look at everything that I could possibly give you. You know, we went through that Frank's memorandum, did we not? The last stream I did a little bit ago about the symbolism at the crime scene, showing you the sticks, going over the runes, the possibilities of buying runes, all the all of that. I mean, did we not thoroughly look at the potential symbolism at the crime scene? That's what I don't understand. (sighs) 
and I'm not going to keep trying. Like, like I said, uh, I blocked everyone. I don't need to talk to anyone. I don't want to talk to anyone. Uh, I want the truth to come out. The whole truth. The, all the secrets. And we know some of them. I want them all out. Laura, were you lurking? Well, why you don't grace us with your presence? Why why must you lurk? You wait until the the end to uh, grace us with your presence. We love you in the chat. D lurking to ask what a K Town boy for the uninitiated. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired as hell. Sorry guys, I am tired as hell. So I'm getting out of here and go to bed. But uh, but good night to everyone. We love you. Thanks, Laura, for showing your little face in here. I appreciate that. Tracy Fleetwood, thanks for coming in again with your little uh, commentary. Yeah, Rochelle, I just want justice for the girls. That's it. I owe no allegiance to no one. Like I said, fuck all this, all this cult shit that you see. You know, you got the circle jerk with the, uh, you got the circle jerk with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, I don't even know what to call him without being rude. I'm trying not to be rude and use bad words, mean words. But, you know, you got the circle jerk on the on the prosecutor shilling side. You got the circle jerk on the defense side. You got the. Uh, the troll farm assholes. Uh, look, I owe allegiance to no one. I promised myself that Abby and Libby were why and what I am concerned with. You know, I was haunted. I'll tell you the truth, because you guys don't probably don't know about my heart for this. But what happened is for years, for years, I think it really started about 2018, 19. It was about 2018 or 19. It's going to take me, I'd, I'd have to really think, um, I'd have to go back and think real hard about when I moved into a particular house I was renting because just I, I can very vividly recall that for some reason just about the time I moved into that house uh, I was really pulled into Abby and Libby even though I had already known about it um, I'm thinking it's about 2018 but it could be early 2019. It's, e it's either like 2018, 20, early 2019 when I just got this this uh, sort of like a a pulling in my in my heartstrings or in my chest, and and just like I could not stop thinking about um, what happened to these girls, and then uh, over time it just never went away. And so that's where my concern is, is like, all I really give a fuck about with this case is whoever left them girls like that, did that to them girls. Uh, I think the truth should come out 100 percent and they should be accountable. And. Um, I guess for that reason, I feel like that's who I owe it to. You know, that's who I owe this this allegiance to is like, no, I'm going to sit up here and scream and yell about those two. Because whatever it's going to take, because obviously my my opinion at this point is it's a massive cover up. I mean, I think majority of YouTubers are in on the cover up. You know me. That's my conspiracy theory. Call it, call it that if you want. Yes, I do think a majority of the YouTubers are in on the cover-up. <clears throat> a 
late as fuck have been more lurky. The energy is allowed. They are. Well, it's our eclipse energy right now. It's going crazy. Troll farm wants us to feel defeated. All right. All right, guys. Peace out. I'm out of here. Thanks for being here. Hey, everyone, I haven't said hello or goodbye to, you know, I love you. Hello and goodbye. Thanks for being here. Everyone on the replay, thanks for leaving your comments. Leave some comments. Join the conversation. Yeah, it's interesting watching them. You got to think. Majority of YouTubers, somehow, somehow, especially the local ones, 